Hi, everyone, and welcome to this chapter of the Free Fall Stack course. In this chapter, we're going to go ahead and install Visual Studio Code on Windows 11. Now, the steps that I'm going to provide are going to be applicable, and I've tested them on Windows 11. They may not necessarily be applicable on older versions of Windows, but I hope they are. If they're not, you can just let me and the community know in the comment section at the bottom of the screen. OK, so let's go ahead and start with downloading uh, Visual Studio Code from its official website. So I'm going to do some screen reshuffling in here so you'll see my screen as well better. I'm going to open a new Chrome tab in here, bring it up so you see it as well. And let's just go ahead and say install or just Visual Studio Code. Okay. And here's the URL that I've mentioned at the bottom of the screen. Okay. So let's go ahead in here and see what we have for options for Windows. We have a stable version to download. OK, so I'm just going to say download for Windows stable build. And this is going to start the download process at the bottom of the screen. You can see then what we're going to do is just to open up the installer. So I'm going to close my Chrome tab in here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm going to accept the agreements. Let's just go ahead in here and it says register code as editor for supported files and add to path, which is quite an important step actually for installing Visual Studio Code because this allows you than to open up Visual Studio Code from your terminal. So I really suggest that you leave it checked as it is, OK? I'm going to press Next and then press the Install button in there. And this is going to go ahead and install Visual Studio Code on my computer. As you can see, the process should actually go really fast, depending on your hardware, of course. But it should go relatively fast, OK? So let's open up Visual Studio Code and start with the installation of some required components, OK? So I'm going to close this. And I can see that it's opened up a default uh, folder for me, but we don't actually have to worry about that. I'm going to close this as well and maybe increase the size as well so we see it better. The first component that we have to install is Python extension on Visual Studio Code. So in here, let's, go, let's just go ahead and, and into the extension section, as you can see to the left-hand side. I'm going to press that. And then I'm going to search for Python, which is we're going to use it for Django development. So in Python, I've already installed it, so I don't have to press the Install button again. I'm just going to press the Reload Required button, so it's kind of like the Install button, OK? So uh, after doing that, you should, after searching for Python, if you haven't installed it from before, you should see an Install button in here. So please just go ahead and press the Install button, OK? Then the next component we have to install is the Rust Analyzer. So I'm just going to say Lock Rust Analyzer. And it's very, very much, uh, I mean, it's kind of like required at the moment not to install Rust at all. <clears throat> Excuse me, because this is this is like a it was a preview version and it's also deprecated. So what you need to install is the Rust analyzer. So then press the install button on the Rust analyzer, please. Then we also have to install the Flutter extension. So I'm going to search for Flutter in here, and then you can see uh, I have, I've already installed, so I don't have an install button in here. But if you haven't done that before, you will have an install button. So please just press that. And Flutter extension with it brings the Dart extension. So and once you install Flutter, it will automatically also install the Dart extension for you. So you don't have to do that manually. OK? Now, um, after, after doing that, we also need to ensure that uh, we can actually start Visual Studio Code from Terminal. And I don't actually think this step is really required for Windows because we've already in the installation process said that we want Visual Studio Code to be uh, to be accessible from path, uh, sorry, from Terminal, and it's been added to the path. So let's just go ahead and say Control Shift P and see if we can actually access that, and then say Shell Command. And we can see that on Windows we actually don't have this possibility. So. All that is important is that we can open up Visual Studio Code from Terminal. So let's go to PowerShell. And I'm in my home folder. So if I say code dot, you can see Visual Studio Code will be open. And it will actually open the current folder in, um, uh, in Visual Studio Code. So that's all that, that matters, really. So um, if you can just go into PowerShell and type code dot with a space, then you can be sure that Visual Studio Code is in path and is executable from your ter terminal. So that was really good. Also, before we actually close Visual Studio Code, I think I actually closed it a little bit too fast. Um, what we need to do also, um, maybe not need to, but if you want to have the same uh, color theme as I'm using, a lot of people ask me almost on a daily basis what color theme I'm using on my Visual Studio Code installation. It's called Tokyo Night. So if you go into extensions and if you search for Tokyo Night in here, you'll find it and then 
we can basically uh, install it. So you can use Tokyo Night, Storm, or Light. And uh, I like Tokyo Night uh, more than Storm. Storm is a little lighter. So that was really it for this chapter. Now you've been able to install Visual Studio Code on Windows 11 or your Windows installation, whichever version you're using, and install Python, uh, Dart, Flutter, and Rust Analyzer extensions plus also Tokyo Night, hopefully as your color theme. So if you have any questions, please do let me and the community know in the comment section uh, of this video at the bottom of the screen. And uh, thank you for hanging with me in this chapter, and I'll see you in the next one.